<laughs> What's up, my beautiful black people? Welcome to the Blackwell Project. Happy, happy Sunday. Every Sunday, we are here. Blackwell Project team to talk about all the black financial issues. So, welcome to the Blackwell Project. Say hello to the Blackwell team. How is everybody today? Good, good, good. good. Great. All right. Y'all don't seem like y'all got no energy now. Yeah, everybody good? Oh, yeah, yeah. everything's good, man. I'm just All right. Good. What day of Corona is this? I feel like this is like day one thousand of Corona. So, like, how enthused do you expect us to be? Like, yeah, Corona is in the way. I'm trying to get outside. Listen, I, I feel you, but what a, what a year I've had. Um, I'm grateful, so I gotta bring the energy every day, or at least at least try to. Right? At That's true. Mm -hmm. But all right, let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of things. The main topic tonight will be. Why are black businesses failing at such a high rate? And what can we do to stop that failure? So before we jump in everything, let's do our health check-in. How's everybody doing? Let's go with uh, Malik first. He looking he looking like he got that work in this week. No, not, not really. The only thing is I got my, I got my bike tuned up, but so physically I've kind of been doing okay. But, but mentally, I haven't really been doing that great uh, this week. So mm -hmm. that's it. You all right? We, do we need to get you on the couch? Yeah, we, uh, need we, intervention, we, we, dog? Might, we might need to all get on the couch. I'm just, I'm just watching all these little kids getting killed this week, man. It's been, it's, it's been taking a toll on me, man. Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely, man, absolutely. I mean, I forget how old the last one was. I saw somebody that passed. It was seven. Yeah, the brother, I think the little boy was seven. Then the next day, the little girl got shot. Then the next day, the I think last night, like four people, and then like one of them was pregnant and little kid. Like it's been a seventeen year old, eighteen year old. It's been a lot this past few days, man. Because I think Philly had eighteen over the weekend, right? I mean, so that's far. what it is. I stopped, I stopped watching the news for that reason, but now that news is now entering my uh, my, my timeline. So right. I was trying to protect my mental health by not watching the news, but now, like I said, all over my timeline, death, murder, kill. And so I might have to take a little uh, social media hiatus to get my mind right. Hey, I, I'm not mad at that. That's wrong with that. That's actually a good thing because, you know, I, I was talking to Courtney about this. I, I really feel, and I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I really feel like people don't read y'all, nor have understand context or content. So, and if they don't, if the people aren't doing those things, then I can only imagine what everybody's timeline looks like on social. Hold on, what do you mean by that, though? I'm just trying to understand what you were saying. People don't read in terms of what? What's going on? Uh, so uh, I'm trying not to go into it. So I just I just see certain posts online. And mm -hmm. I just be like, where did you get that from? Like, it's not factual. Okay. It, it, it's totally bombastic. And you're posting it. And listen, we all get caught up every now and again. And we share something that we may have not done the best job of fact checking on, but I see it all the time from like the same folks. So Listen, man, we live. I get what you're saying now. Now I understand more what you're saying, but we live in a yeah. world now where I don't even. Some people don't even think facts matter anymore, man. Like, you know, in, include including uh, 45. <laughs> Everything is about yeah. how you feel. If I if I feel a certain way, it don't matter what the facts are. I mean, that's just the world right. we're in right now. You're right. I mean, sad, I, I, but... I've been, I've been admit to sharing stuff that I haven't fact checked. I mean, because I eight enough hours in the day. Oh look, that looked interesting. Share. I'm saying right. like, oh, Elon Musk goes to the moon two years. Share. That's interesting, but I'm not going to do a whole bunch of research uh, beyond that. You know, but my thing is, is social media. In my eyes, it is I think it's more of entertainment. And so personally, I don't take everything serious, but there are people that do take it serious. And so what I, what I, what I have done, though, is I stopped posting my stock picks because I clearly, before I post it, I clearly state, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you <laughs> like, yeah, I bought that because you picked it. I'm like, yo, what the? And then you know what? Yeah, and I man. So, I and so I'm Malik. <laughs> I think you might appreciate my conservativeness now over the years because of that. And it's like, it's crazy. I'll put something out there and people will just buy it and they will say just what you said. I right. it you talked about it. Shut, shut so, I, explicitly, I, I explicitly say, I do not know what I'm doing, but I did this thing. 
Listen, Steve, man, you a leader, man. You got all of us in this forward call right now, man. You got to get that's what comes with the territory, man. You have a call Carter. <laughs> I'm like, as a as a, a a a leader and someone who's a professional, people look to you whether you want to be looked to or not. So mm. when you post something or you endorse something, people assume it's because you have a relationship or an understanding of it as to why you're even involved enough to post it in the first place. Right. And, and and I appreciate that. And I thank you. But and, and that's why I lead with I don't know what I'm doing. Right. I lead with <laughs> right. I lead with I, I say I don't know what I'm doing. So don't follow my picks. And the people send me an inbox. I bought that because I'm like, oh, I'm going. So, so I they, they did the share. Oh, 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 you did the share. Hold on. Oh, 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 y'all. Let's not get to. Uh, and, I'm about, and it's I'm about to do a but hold on, y'all, and this is my fault. Let's not get too far in the weeds. Shot the, shot we'll the four stop. Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. Right, all right, but let's finish our wealth check in. Malik got his bike tuned up, so you about to hit them streets, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, all right, Corey, what you got jumping? Did you recover yet from your injury? How's your shoulder? I, my shoulder is still jacked up, but I got up about 150 this week. I, 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 you know, I got back out there, but it's still jacked up. You know, after about 25 a day. I'm I'm no good. I was getting up 125 a day. Now I'm only getting up 25 a day. So road recovery. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Road recovery. And but I, I started doing some laps. So I start. I did some laps. On, uh, got this little track out here on the ranch. So we out here. You know, me, me, and me, and me, me and young Charlie doing laps. I've been chasing Charlie around the track. So I don't know how many steps that is, but we we out here running on the track. He's running and I'm chasing until I get tired and go in the did y'all pick up did y'all pick up the, the subtle stunt? He's out there on the ranch. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. On the ranch. On the ranch, yeah. I've yeah. been out here, I've been out here, for, I've been out here for two months. I've I never heard call it a ranch. Oh, all right, so yeah, I, he's stunting. I've been out where, 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 where do y'all think I've been for the last two months? I told y'all this in private and publicly. Where, uh, where's the stunning? But I but listen. Oh. I want to rant for two months. Me too. Listen, you you okay. said in Texas. You didn't say it in Texas on a private ranch with a track. You didn't say that. That <laughs> did come yeah. uh, Okay, one. well. Stunt 101. <laughs> so listen, everybody. Okay. everybody in the I, got, comment, I, I got my parachute on and I, I was being a stunt man. I, I didn't right. know I was being a stunt man. So listen, every, everybody in the comments just say Corey's a stunt man. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, how you doing? How you doing, Tracy? <laughs> I'm good. I'm just trying to stay above water, but I'm working and moving and I got a million, million pieces going on right now. So I'm just trying to keep sane, but it'll it'll all work out for well for the best. So I'm 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 excited what's to come. So we'll we'll be sharing some more news as the as the weeks roll in. Well, I know you I know you wonder NDA and all that old fancy stuff for the rich people, but what's up with your health check in? You drink water this week? Did you walk up and down yes. the steps? Yes, yes. Lots of water. Always drinking water. Um, up and down steps all the time because I'm in and out of houses all the time. So, yes, several steps. All right. Well, <laughs> I kind of want to do Courtney and, and Jimmy at the same time because I know what, what they want to say. That's fine, Patty. <laughs> I, you two don't, you right. two don't get right. your own space. Oh, all right, okay. All right, Courtney. Tell us about your health check-in this week. I mean, it's been it's been a little shaky. I was on the Peloton. I finished finished the Peloton, which was, the Peloton. was a, so no no. So it's the Peloton bike, but it was the Peloton. So Peloton was a four week program where we had to complete different things to get Pel the Peloton badge of the week. So <laughs> I'm we're done with week four. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I don't know what I'm doing next. I've been a little lethargic. Um, I kind of feel like what Malik's been feeling. It's just a little bit overwhelming this week. Work's been super busy. I have other stuff, other projects going on. So I think, again, um, I have to kind of recenter and kind of say, okay, well, what are we doing this week to get it back together? Because one of the things is that I feel better when I work out, but sometimes I'm like, oh, it just takes so much for me to actually do it. So I was like, all right, let's get back on the, on the boat. So. Okay. All right, Jimmy, what you got for us? Listen, man, um, the Peloton is probably at this point one of my top three purchases of all time, man. Um, 
because like you know and i, I told y'all last time about the pandemic and how it's given me an opportunity to get myself right so i'm doing amazing man i lost another three pounds this week so i'm down about a total of 38 pounds since june you know what i mean and um, just keep, keep the pellet, keep it going on the peloton man i'm on there every day at least once or twice a day you know because i can you know work while walking and all kinds of stuff like that man so it's it's, it's pretty dope and the stock is fire too <laughs> I knew y'all was gonna get that in. So listen, y'all. Last week I had a beef. This week I got another beef. This week uh -oh. my beef is with Jimmy, Corey, and Malik. But <laughs> I just gotta announce this. I am the main king this week. Just one of the left out I am the main king this week. My drink me, my drink me killed all y'all. Hey, no, no. no. My <laughs> No, right. I, I, first off, I don't, I don't, I don't even think that was your best one. That man, wasn't your best one. Why don't you use crazy to cut it off, man? What? What? What was? What you got? What you got, Malik? The the wallow me, my dude. Cut it off. Oh, I ain't seen you did a wallow me. Oh, oh, I saw. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. Here's what's, here's what's crazy about that, man. I got a wallow meme in the tuck. It's a different one, but like at this point now, since we all in the game. I gotta watch, hey, man, because you, you know. I didn't even know we were playing. Why don't you put them side by side? Because I'm like kind of, I don't know. You go, you put put mine up yours, car. So well, yeah, hey, you said. Hey, my, 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 hold up, my 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 Adrian Broner, you can, my Adrian Broner meme though. Come on, man. No, no. You, you know, know what? what? I'll, I'll be honest. I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm biased against Adrian Broner, so no, no, I can't put them up side by side though. We got, uh, oh, how about how about, all right, how about, how about, how about Umar? I got I got two Umar memes this week, and I got the Adrian Broner meme. Come on, man, you ain't take the crown yet. Uh, Umar uh, Umar is a cheat code, though. You can't really use Umar. Exactly. Everything he says will be crazy. <laughs> See, look, look at the look, hold up, look at the look at the comments. Look at the comments, though. Panic, though. My taxes, I'm too frank, though. Virgil got a panic when my doing too much. All right, where's yours at, Malik? It's on my page. It's on your page. Yeah, coach yeah, yeah. Carter or yeah, or Coach Carter. Hold right. up, Coach Carter. We couldn't even hear. We couldn't even hear them drums though, Mar. Yeah, you oh, can probably turn it up a little bit. Can right. you? Yeah, so you're just me. Where's the wallow me? Oh, you got a future me. Just scroll down a little bit. Right, right there, wallow, right there, right, right there. <laughs> Yo, this actually was good. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, if, if, you, if you understand what that means, then it is good. Like, uh, no, you can't hear it. Yeah, you can't hear it. But no, that actually was good. I was, I was laughing. <laughs> nah, that that's good. That's good that money good. right there. That was good. That, that was, was actually good. really good. Hold on, my my Umar and Adrian Broner meme though, man. You gotta you gotta understand, man. I I, I see y'all coming for the throne though. No, listen, you, 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 yeah, you, like, you more don't count though, like you said, because he's just, he <laughs> <laughs> a maniac, I dropped, dog. I dropped two Umar memes though, but yeah, my cousin said he I just watched know. a YouTube video and he didn't need any cost to learn the trade options. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. He got his ass cooked. Oh man, that's hilarious. I don't know, y'all. I'm still gonna give it to me though. I think Drake pulled it on for me. Of course, of course you are. are. Wait, yeah. no, I think we should vote. I think it's a that's what I'm, that's what I, No, that's what I was, I'm gonna tell the Hold audience. To vote. Everybody in the audience vote. Tell us okay, what you think. The, the audience should vote because I don't I don't know. Who had Hold the up, best Sunday uh -huh. meme this week? But hold yeah. up, hold up, though. So my, my Umar meme don't count? My first Umar meme don't count? You can't. Umar, hey, no, you cannot. Yeah, Umar the Chico. We cannot. Yeah. We get it. Oh, come Umar, on, man. man. So oh, man. Was so, yo, come on. Show the first Umar meme. That was so far. Come on, man. That was hilarious, man. I I should get it just because of the first. Not the second one. The first Umar meme, man. The, all right. Hold on. We got to show it. We got to show it. Listen, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Like, Umar has got the mean creation game down pat. Oh, I yeah. I got to give him that, right? Not that one, the other one. The other one is the one that came before right. that one. Because that one's funny, too. But the other one's even better. Oh, man. How many you got? 
Go down. I drop memes every day, man. I'm the I'm the king out here, man. Go down. There you go with the Phillies hat. Oh man! Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. All right, y'all. Listen, audience, tell us what y'all think the best meme of the week was. <laughs> no, anything, anything Umar is excluded. You can't use Umar. He's just, I, yeah, I think he's the can. outlier. I think it just throws off the game. I agree. You have to throw that one out. <laughs> I think you have to throw that one out. But I mean, I think, I mean, I still, it still gets an honorable mention because it's still good. But I feel like it's just so, like, it's just so easy. Like, you, you can't, no, no. <laughs> but, but I'm going to reserve my comment on who I think won this round until the audience weighs in. Cause I, I have, right. I have my, I have my thoughts. All right. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Y'all know I got it. Just, just. No, you definitely crown. don't got it, man. No, I, 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 I got at least, I got at least, first of all, I got at least seven that drop. Malik might no, go, listen, Malik, Malik go like crazy though. Malik dropped like three a day. Yeah. Listen, y'all, y'all been stepping y'all game up. Y'all definitely been stepping y'all game up. No, listen, but listen, I, I think the one with the deer is better than yours, Kamari. The one I did with the deer better than yours. Ooh. When the deer jumped off the highway, yo, yeah. that was crazy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking at the comments. I got two votes already. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Adrian Broner, man. Oh, wait. Okay. Got his ass Jay and Don have come for, have voted for Jimmy. Got, you got, got two, his ass cooked. Two check marks for Jimmy. Nah, listen, I came from that was that was crazy. That was a great one. All right, hold on, hold on. We gotta pull it up. Malik brought it up, so we gotta pull it up. Give us one second, y'all. We're gonna get into this topic. We're gonna jump right into it. Listen, while we are waiting, oh, he get to show more of his work. Come on, man. You yo, you posted two. Talking about you did you got two. Yeah, Jimmy. Listen, I'm, man, I'm listen to I got I got but hold on, hold on. But hold up, though. Here's the funny uh, thing. Here's the funny thing, though. Hold on, Jimmy. Hold on, Jimmy. I, I'll hold be on, honest Jimmy. with you. Go ahead. Jimmy, hold on. Hold on. So listen, everybody, while y'all waiting for me to put up Malik, Malik's post, tell us what do y'all think is the problem with black owned businesses? Why is over 40% of black owned businesses going out of business? Put your comment in the chat. Um, and that 41% yeah. is since Corona has started. Why has 41% of black owned businesses going out of business since Corona started? Tell us what you think. All right, Jimmy. What were you saying? And I was giving you your props, Kamari. All I was saying is that, you know, um, I did like, I did like, I like both of you guys' stuff. Like, I like the fact that y'all are, you know, getting in the game, you know, coming for the throne. But I think that that wasn't even your best one. The Drake one wasn't your best one. I like your self destruction one better than the Drake one. Yeah, like well, that one yeah, that was way better. Let's see. That was, that was personal. That was, that was a throwback, right? So I didn't think, especially some of the young folks, I didn't think they was going to get that. I yeah, see, but I was outside, so I get it. I get it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, I give you my well, I give you credit for posting That's that, yo, because I, 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 I cooked one up of a deer jumping out of a like a um, parking lot, the top of a parking lot, and I didn't have yeah. the balls to post it because I was like, yo, they're going to come after me because I know I know that this didn't end well for the deer. Because you, <laughs> you can literally hear it in the video. Go, you hear it go, pop. I was like, I can't post this. <laughs> and I saw you post that. I was like, I was like, oh, he went, he went there. Hey, but look, I'm going to say this. I'm talking about all time. Hey, there's nothing beating. Look at your walls. Ain't nothing beating that one. I would have told you to close it. Yeah, look at your walls. Ain't nothing beating that. Hey, that, that, that was funny. Yeah, that was he, funny. Flamed, he flamed young boy for no reason. <laughs> he murdered the young boy for no reason. That is a my guy band. This is so no, that actually had to be the best one. Nah, nah, I got it. But I do want to acknowledge this though, right? Because we are at war. We are at war. In my sister soldier voice. We got cats out here stealing the memes too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. So the whole training day meme was mine first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo, I didn't Jimmy. even know you posted it though. I told you that. <laughs> uh -oh. 
When I posted, he came right in my neck. He said, yo, you stole my... I said, I didn't even know you posted that. Well, it says different stuff, though. Listen, it's all in fun and games, y'all. This is all fun. But guess what, though? At the end of the day, though, right, this is all education, and we're making it fun. So that's what I'm really happy about. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, folks, so tell us, why do y'all think Black-owned businesses have such a rough time in Corona, but why is Black-owned business had such a rough time in general. So to start this off, I'm going to start off with you, Corey. What, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think it, it has to do a lot with the, 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 the systemic things that uh, we're not, we're, we've had problems with in the past and now they're, you know, during, during the Rona, it showed up extra heavy because, you know, they put the money through the banks and a lot of us are unbanked. And so, you know, the banks had the, the, the it's government money that was passed through the banks. But if you don't, if you were unbanked or underbanked and you weren't properly, you know, put together to get the money, now you, you was just asked out. And so, you know, for those people, you know, who, who weren't banked properly, which is a lot of the black community, they were excluded from that money or they had to do some flim flam to get the money, which put them in jeopardy of getting their, you know, getting their time stole by getting put in jail. So, you know, just be real careful. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that, I think that's one of the reasons why we suffering a lot because, you know, we weren't allowed. And then once then when we were allowed, a lot of people don't have the acuity and knowledge to be able to get in the game the proper way. Um, and so they need, you know, they need guidance to get in the game the proper way so that they can take advantage of all the things that are happening in the system if they want to partake in the system. You know, I know a lot of people that don't even want to partake in the system, um, but their businesses are suffering. I know some people who are making, you know, a ton of money. Oh, and the other reason is because we we are uh, a lot of black businesses are service businesses and we're going to kill, kill service businesses. You know, if you got like a barber shop or you cook food, you know, a lot of those businesses, you know, in our hood that are owned by black people, are either barber shops or they sold food spots. Right, so, right. so when you when you got a barber shop or a soul food spot, a, a service business, and you can't serve nobody, your business is going under. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's that's the other part of it. So being not properly banked, if you have a different kind of business, and then also having so many service based businesses. Uh, with Rona and not being able to serve people, that's the you know that's the one two punch for knocking out a lot of businesses. Gotcha. All right, Cordy, coming to you next. Yeah, Corey hit the nail on the head on a lot of it. it's a type of business. It's the fact that we have not had the the long standing banking relationships. And Corey said, like the funds were run through banks, and banks already discriminate against black businesses. So how do you think that was going to happen? How do you think that was going to work out? And I feel like and and we've we all read a, a article um, just kind of talking about how there's there was a, a misnomer that African American business or Black business don't apply for funding at the same rate that whites do, but that's not true. We do we apply at the same about the same um, rate, but we get denied at a much higher rate. So again, we still have the systemic racism kind of flowing through the banking system. So when you kind of added the banks as the gatekeeper for necessary funds for Corona aid, what do you think is going to happen? And then also in terms of some people decide, some black businesses decide to opt out of the system. But if you opt out of the system, like in terms of accounting practices, tax filings, all of the other stuff, but you needed that to actually get the necessary funding for the Small Business Association. So you had a kind of a lot of different things going on. But I also feel that we consistently come to the marketplace and we always get if somebody if if a white man is getting a dollar, we're getting something less than a dollar for the same amount of service. So again, we try, some people try to kind of even the playing fields like, okay, I'm going to go off the grid, but kind of in doing that, you create this other set of problems that nobody really knew was coming. It's just, it's just really unfortunate. And we've consistently had these types of problems. I mean, we've always been treated poorly by the, blank, the banking system overall. We've had um, consumer, consumer issues in terms of um, overdraft fees, in terms of redlining. I mean, I just don't know how we expected to get a good outcome here. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. What you got, Tracy? What do you think? I, I echo pretty much the same thing that everybody's already said, those entire points. The gatekeepers were the banks. The banks most of the time and 90% of the time are not uh, 
backing black businesses. We don't have accountants and other uh, financial gatekeepers who are helping to run or give good tax planning to our businesses. And <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of businesses who utilize those services. Okay, I know that. I, yeah, I, they, I, should. I, they should, but they don't. Did you take I, that person, Kamari? Are you are you hurt? No, are you sad? No, I'm not hurt, but I do preach tax planning all the time. Nobody listens to you, though. <laughs> Clearly not you, because you never listen to. Yeah, and my not true. You got real. Tra- like, you, you, you got real trust Penny when she said that though. Right, I'm like Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect. I, I get it. <laughs> we do, but I mean, Kamari, like, come on, Kamari. We consistently have. We've always said, you know, be careful about who you're taking your financial advice from. Do these things. Do that. We were like screaming from the rooftops, and nobody wants to listen to us. And then when stuff goes left, they're looking at us like, fix it, fix it. And I'm like, oh, that's a big mess. I don't know. Mm, sounds really professional. And now it's really, really completely knocking them out of the box for being able to make, to be able to access some of this money because they never played by the rules that all these other businesses were taught to orchestrate themselves with. Right, right. What do you think, Jimmy? What you got on this? Um, we're playing catch up. So Everything that everyone said is absolutely true, um, but we're playing catch up. We're not in we're not in a position that we should be. Um, historically speaking, we just haven't had the opportunities. What I found interesting, though, reading the article you sent, um, it said that forty percent of receipts from black owned businesses are concentrated in just thirty counties, mm-hmm. just thirty counties, that's which is crazy. Yeah, which is crazy, right? So that's one percent of all counties in the country. And out of those counties, 19 out of 30 are areas with the highest number of COVID-19 cases. So in looking at that and how it relates to COVID, I mean, that right there would tell you why. It's also what Corey said. We're not really in consumer defensive businesses. We're in a lot of service businesses, but nothing that's really consumer defensive. So we will struggle in a situation like this. And a lot of people have opted to you know, work outside of the system because they weren't getting what they needed out of the system. But then when something like this happens and you don't have your paperwork straight, you know, you uh, SOL. Um, but overall, it's just that, you know, we're playing catch up. We're playing catch up. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of education that needs to happen. Um, you know, so if, first of all, just in having your paperwork straight, right? Just in having your paperwork straight, we need to be educated on what that actually means. Because there's people that actually do business on a daily basis, but don't have any sort of structure set up. Don't, don't do their accounting the proper way. So we need a lot of education, um, but we are playing catch up in the grand scheme of things. Absolutely. And so, Jimmy, you kind of picked up on the same factoid that I picked up on about the close concentration and proximity. Yeah, I didn't know it was that. I didn't know it was. I didn't know it was that concentrated, though. That that shocked me a little bit. Right. But the thing that that kind of triggered my mind, right, is, you know, you see a lot of people talk about separate, separate, you know, all our nationalists. You know, many of us want to take a state from Georgia or some space in Georgia or Alabama. And so I was thinking like, well, what would happen if we were all in a quote, quote unquote state, right? But we still kind of intermingled with the US economy and something major happened, whether it be a military outbreak, uh, um, a, a, a health outbreak or disparity or something like that, where would it leave us at? And so to me, this shows that and people might get mad at me, but it shows that separation may not necessarily be the key in terms of geographic location. What do y'all think about that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that it's not the key. I, I, I just think that what I, what I do take from what you said is we're not prepared for it, right? Mm-hmm. So it not being the key and us being prepared for it are two different things, in my opinion, right? I'm not saying that it's not the key, but we just are not prepared for it. Because, I mean, just psychologically, a lot of us aren't prepared to do anything like that. Um, <laughs> we, we love but our oppression. Let's just keep it a bit. We, should, we should leave right now. Right? And so if we're not prepared for it right now, then what are we doing to get prepared? We're, we're not. That's we're a better stuck. question. We're inside. We're stuck inside, Kamari. Right. We're stuck. 
<laughs> I mean, but I, I think to your point about the health, we have a health issue. We have a health crisis that has economic impact. So I think the problem is that we have in the African in the black community we have a greater instance of comorbidities. So on top of that is being and then one of the things that we know about COVID is that it spreads quickly and it spreads in areas that are concentrated with people. So you know African Americans tend to live or black people tend to live in black areas and they tend to be in black areas in certain parts of the country. So we're looking when we're looking at the report, we saw we saw Georgia, we saw California, we saw Texas. These are not surprising places for them to be adversely affected by COVID. And so I mean when when white America gets a cold, we get the flu. I mean I, I don't I don't know what else to say. And I and it's frustrating because again we have so much talent in our community, <laughs> but it keeps you. getting facts. I mean, it just keeps getting, you know, pressed down by something. And it's not always a, a health crisis, but it, it's, we're always getting the short end of the stick of with the economic crisis. I mean, we're talking about how job, job, the job report is a little bit better this week, but how are African, how are black people failing, faring? How are they faring? And they probably aren't faring as well as everybody else. So it's, it's just, I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do to fix it. I mean, we kind of talked about it a couple of different times in a couple of different ways, but I, I don't have like a real live magic or silver bullet. Oh, that's not going to work. That's all fuzzy. I'm about to say, no, I was about to say, is that, is that my eyes? I was, I, I was about to say, I think I didn't like any That's all like Oscar the Grouch. It was fuzzy. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch? What? <laughs> no, it was fuzzy as hell. But I was going to say something, you know, I was going to say something more derogatory, so, but Oscar the Grouch was way better than yeah. the other dude. Thanks, Corey. What are you going to say, Corey? But I, I, I will, hey, 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 listen. I will <laughs> say this, all right? I do think now, now is the time more than ever that Black folks need to really double their efforts in terms of supporting Black-owned businesses. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel that, yeah. that is stated enough. We're not and I, listen, I know we have a lot of social media support for black owned businesses. I see a lot of younger folks starting to get it, but I'm not sure how all that is translating offline. Um, and I'm not talking about the e-commerce versus retail conversation. Just overall, how many businesses are black people patronizing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? And I think that's important. I don't think most people understand the, the, the importance of supporting a black owned business, honestly. Like, you know, uh, when you read the data and when you read like certain books, uh, what was the books? Uh, Maggie's book, um, you know, um, she, when she tried to uh, support a black owned business for one year. Um, when you read that book or when you read Power and Nomics, any book that mentions that's it, that's it, my black hair, that's it, you got it right there. When you read that book, when you read that book, um, I'll probably go back and reread it again because I read it a little while ago. But when you when you read that book and you get get an understanding of uh, the power of supporting a black owned business and what it does for our community and our people overall, you have a different perspective. Like you said, Kamari, all of us on here, it's already it's already ingrained in us and it's part of what we do. But for most people, it's not what they do, because I don't think they even understand the importance of it. Sometimes they want to do it because it's cliche and it sounds good to do. But I don't think most people understand why. Yeah, I guess we need to figure out a, a sexier way because all the fraudsters are getting all the attention. So, like, do we need to come up with a real sexy? Yeah, but, but, but you know, no, market, marketing and propaganda is what sells, man. Like, you know, me and Jimmy have a, a book list, and one of the books on there is uh, Brand Washed. And right, so if you read that book, it tells you, you know what I mean, the, the limps and the amount of money and the amount of time these companies spend on branding. And so if you look at the amount of time and the amount of money that's spent on branding and then the amount of time and the amount of money we spend on branding, we is, is not even comparable. And so if we want those outcomes, we have to, you know, put our put our resources where 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 you know where we want the outcomes to go. Because if that's that's what we're fighting, you know what I mean? Like we're we're fighting with one, we don't even got no arms. Like we fighting a boxer with no arms. We out here, you know, we kicking. And they and they fighting and they we getting beat up. You know, we yeah, defense this all here. Your arms too short to box with God as a um, yeah. But um but listen though, um part of it with COVID, like the, the majority of people affected make forty thousand dollars or less. 
I mean, that's the that's the people that would support a black business. You know, also, how many platters can I buy? Right. How many hair yeah. can I get? Like, I'm not like what is the, the business right diversity? But I didn't know I'm a Philly guy. I didn't even know until last week that it's a black owned butcher out here on, on Hilltop. I think like 60th in Lansdowne, I think it is. You know, really? like I know that. nobody. I'm, I'm from West Philly. I live right there. And, and I had no idea it was a black butcher. You know what I'm saying? It, and I just ride by it. Like only butchers I ever see in my neighborhood, like they'll you'll see like the uh the Arabs and the Pakistani, the halal meat stores, but I didn't know that it was just this this black wall butcher right up there. And even though I'm trying to fall back from meats, you know, I'm gonna have to call them see what they got and get a delivery. You know, another reason why businesses failed, like if I wasn't prepared financially, if I didn't have passive income, if I didn't have savings. I would, I heard my business will be destroyed, right? Because I have only worked maybe a hundred hours since March, maybe a hundred hours. I'm saying I did because I'm not out here doing the same activities that I used to. You know, I have a autoimmune disease. I am not putting myself at risk of getting something that might kill me. I'm saying like do and a lot of other people like in a, a similar situation, they may have a pre-existing condition or or they don't even know about it. But like I said, me, I know about mine, right? I, I know about what I have. I found, out, I found out about it like three or four years ago. So I'm not putting myself at risk. And so like I said, if I wasn't prepared financially, I would be in financial ruin. If I went and had the big house and big cars and everything else, you know, and so a part of that is a lot of these black businesses are barely even holding on anyway. You know, they're making enough, they're making just enough money to survive, they, they still live in check. You know, they can sell a bunch of hoagies or whatever else, but they're still living check to check. You know, they, they weren't. It's not like they're thriving in the first place out of the smaller ones. You know, and what's my man downtown? The, the sneaker store, boy. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a sneaker store. There's a black owned sneaker store. He gets black owned mm-hmm. sneaker store. Gets, it's a sneaker store and a fitness trainer. The guy, I forget his name, but he's an Olympian, and he was a second in Gerard, and he moved the store. But uh, yeah, he's an Olympian, and he has a, and he sells sneakers, and they also do personal training in there. Did he? Oh, so did like, he have one on Spring Garden before? I don't know about Spring Garden, but I do know I like that. Six and six at the at the I don't know where it is now. He yeah, six and spring, he had one at six and Spring Garden. I mean, I don't know how many people with that business plan. So it got to be the same guy where they sold sneakers. Yeah. It was personal training, and because I, I looked at that, like that's a whole lot going on. But yeah, it was one at six in Spring Garden. But what yeah, you no, say about but it, it, it made sense for his business as a you know he was a um a, a distance runner and they trained people for so he sold um running sneakers. It's not like he sold Jays. He just sold yeah. all different running sneakers. So it made sense for his business. Mm-hmm. You know, he, did, he didn't have Froyo in the front. I'm saying it was it was in, <laughs> <laughs> and pages in the back. Yeah, it was. Yeah. With a yeah, it wasn't random spoons. No, no random spoons. What would you get ready to say about this business? Oh. Are you get ready to say something about this business? No. So what I was saying is a business like that is a strong business, but you know if you can't have the customers, nobody's doing personal training, viable business. But for a long time there wasn't personal training, and he's in an area with high rent. You know, and I know like me, my lenders, my lenders didn't give me no respite. You know, when they came to these loans because of COVID, like, nah, bro, I, I need that. Mary, you ain't never lied. You ain't but, never lied. But I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick, right? Um, Malik just said something that the guys are training, nobody's coming in. But I know David Miller, who's a very popular trainer here in Philadelphia, is doing online stuff. A lot of our businesses have not made the pivot to do more business online. And I think that's crucial because that is the wave of the future. That's the way we do it. Right, but how, but you can't, what I'm saying is when you look at our the, the businesses here, right, they're very small. And like I said, how many dinners can I buy? Because there are a lot of restaurants. There's a lot of hair salons. Black women hardly even own a, a nail salon, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know why a black nail salon can't survive here, at least in the high level. I would understand that. But um, like these businesses are, are, service oriented and they're like 10 20 dollar businesses they really aren't these huge black enterprises i'm saying like there's like like rap snacks used to be here 
I look what I'm saying, but I don't even know if that's even here anymore. You know, Master so, that, right? Was that Master P yeah. has that now, right? Yeah, but yeah. It, was, it was always his. It was always his, but it was starting hitting Philly. It Interesting enough, Rap Snacks is actually starting a whole stock app. It's called really? Stock Boss Up. I saw. It. Yes. So I've actually yeah. been working. I've been talking with them and working with them over the last month and a half, almost. So Courtney, yeah. What's the stock Boss Up. Stop. That woman. Huh? Ooh. Where's the parachute? I know. Did you know. P, P, P called me the other day. He talked about the ass. <laughs> Did he call me the other day? <laughs> Did he call me the other day? You know, Master P was on my line. Oh my God. The other day. Yeah. You know, the, no, the, president, the president of Peloton was on my phone the other day. Like, <laughs> I want to ask the audience this. So, again, what, what do y'all think we can do to help strengthen black owned businesses? for everyday living and for when we are in a pandemic epidemic type of situation. Let's check in with the comments real quick. Yeah. So Wayne Terry says, I believe some black owned businesses struggle because they don't actually know what a business is. Ooh. Mm, when you have like a that. business, you don't spend your operating capital like mm. it's your own personal funds. Correct. Oh, that's a really good one. You can't call me you cannot yeah. commingle at all. And a lot of I people agree. don't know, and a lot of people don't even know what commingling is. Right. So I'm telling you, don't commingle. And they're like, oh, okay. But they don't know what commingling is. So you keep your <laughs> personal funds over here, you keep your business funds over there. And the two shall never meet. Now, when I make a distribution from my business to myself, I send I either write myself a check. Yeah, I still got checks. Or I send myself a PayPal with something in the memo. So yep. I have to do something that provides a paper trail of where this money is going. That's right. And a lot of people don't understand that. But the thing is, is that one, I mean, I think I'm, I'm biased because I grew up in an entrepreneurial household. So I grew up with somebody who was and who was math inclined. So he's like, we don't mix the money. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? He said, that money over there, that money over there. You see those things? They don't grow. I'm like, all right, fine. But like, we don't even have that basic conversation in the household. Like Ter uh, Tracy sh shared a couple of weeks ago, she said for her, her family you does, you used to do Monopoly. And that's how she learned about real estate. So I think if we start having these conversations in the home with kids and not necessarily on the level of business, but just understanding the, uh, the concepts, they'll get it. But we're not having enough conversations in the household when it comes to history, when it comes to money, when it comes to estate planning and wealth planning. We're just not having them. And I know that as a culture, we have a history of being secretive. So I get that. But I think that on top that on top of the ignorance is really hurting us as a community all right so let's get to wayne's other comment right mm -hmm. so it says, i believe some black owned businesses don't know what a business is right mm -hmm. reiterating that point mm -hmm. your business account is not your personal account okay. two underfunded three yeah, don't, research, don't research and know their business field enough that's I, I would like to talk about number two underfunded mm -hmm. is a huge disparity in black business. A lot of us literally are jumping out there on a wing and a prayer with an idea that we had in our head, starting a business with no business plan, no saving, no cushion. And then when we do well and we start steamrolling, when we get into trouble, tank. I mean, but some people got to get it out the mud, right? So what do you say to them? You said some people got to get a what? Get it, Get, it Get it out the mud. Get it out the mud. Like they gotta come out the mud. I'm not mad about getting it out the mud. The moment that you see your business starting to pick steam up, you need to be consulting these financial professionals who can help plant seeds. So when the harvest starts to get a little dry, you can still eat. Yeah, man. Gotcha. I think I think there's an issue that um comes before all of this. I don't think we love each other enough because oh, yeah. the, fact, the, fact is, yeah. the fact is most again, like I said before, most of us don't understand the importance of it. And something that really bothers me is we're represented well in certain fields, like, you know, whether, I, whether it's a real estate agent or attorneys, and some of us will still won't even use each other for when I see someone who, who's, who's, a, who's black and doesn't have a black real estate agent, that bothers me to no end. Um, yeah, not, 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 yeah, and it's, not, and it's a funny thing. It's not that I'm trying to represent them. It's just the fact that, yo, we're well represented in that field. 
when I well, see someone without a black attorney, like, and we're well represented in that field, there's certain fields that we're well represented in and our people still won't even support that. So I think it's a psychological thing. We don't love each other enough or understand the importance of supporting each other when we're the only ones playing that game. Everybody else is playing a different game. So therefore they get the income from our community as well as their own community. So this is why we're always playing from behind. We're in a game. We're constantly playing from behind. Mm -hmm. Y'all dropping bombs tonight. All of y'all. All of y'all dropping bombs. Yeah. No, that, 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 that was a bomb. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy, I agree. Yeah. I, think, I think the biggest one is the lack of love yeah. for self. You know, it's hard to do for self when you don't love self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the generations before us didn't really trust each other either. So they don't trust the customer service. They don't trust that they're going to be able to execute. And we now have this generation now where we have a plethora of people of color who are coming out with doctorates degrees, master's degrees, just in specific areas of business. And we still can't even say, I would rather give my sister with a PhD my business and let her run with it and tell me, you know, and go through the ups and downs than give it to somebody else that is not of my ethnicity, who I believe and was told that they actually can do a good job instead of the sister who has the actual pedigree. Yeah, and I think that's that's another thing. We have the education, but we're not getting the places because we're not utilizing each other. And a lot of other ethnicities don't want to use utilize us, so we're not getting the experience that we need. And I think that ends up hurting us on top. So it's not just, oh, you don't patronize me, but one, I'm not in- improving my skill set because I'm not getting the exposure to the things that I need to to actually build my ability to serve. Right. Now, Jimmy, Jimmy just said something, right? Um, I want to ask y'all a question. A lot of, I hear a lot of people say that segregation or desegregation killed the black community and killed black business. Mm. I think that, I think that I was agree. the number one thing that killed black business. I agree. So going back to Jimmy's comment, if we all had real black love, would it have mattered? It would. <laughs> because, but listen, listen to this. And, and, and when Tracy was talking, I didn't want to cut her off, but what she was saying and what I agree with is that systemically, the thing about it is it's systemic, right? Because the thing that they do that that the government does, and they, you know, is, is plenty of examples of this, is that they pit black people against black people when they want to tear black people down, right? And so, and, and this is government-funded programming that did this. This is not no, you know, made-up conjectures and stories there is well documented government funded black on black you know i don't want to call it crime because it's not even a crime is it's, it's worse than a crime and and what happened is what segregation did it it when we didn't have any choice we we didn't have any choice and so all the money stayed in the community and they saw our community start to thrive and so what they did is say all right we're going to give you the choice, but we're not going to give you no funding and no no nothing to go behind that. All we're going to do is give you the choice to come spend your money with us. We're not going to give you any services. We're, we're going to keep redlining you. We're going to keep doing all of these other things to you, but you have the choice to spend your money with our white businesses. And that's the only thing that happened. They didn't give us any other thing that would help us su- survive and thrive. All they said was, yes, you have the choice to spend your money with our white businesses. And so none of, that's not about love. That's a, that's just about we, we were being repressed. And now because we didn't know that having the, we didn't have that full opportunity. Right. We thought we were getting a full out, you know, all right, you know, separate but equal thing. And it wasn't separate, but equal. It was just separate. And now you can come spend your money with us. No, but I think that Kamari's point is if we had love, that wouldn't even matter. Because if we had love for each other, we would understand that we need to support each other. Like, I wouldn't want to go support someone else's business because I understand the importance of doing so because I love my people. I think that it was it's a valid point. I think that's that education making. and not love. I think that's education and not love. I like, think it's if, a combination, I, I, though. I think it's education I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination because let me, let me jump in here real quick. if I get the education, but I don't love my people, then I I don't care. And, and a lot of people are like that. They tell you straight up, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to whoever got the best price. Mm-hmm. Right, go ahead, go ahead, Malik. Jump in. So, so, so about me right now. Just the other day, I had to. Um, I ended up hiring a a white zoning attorney 
for a property, but that's because I know that the RCO around there is heavily, heavily white and she is she has relationship with people on the um uh, on the Sony board, right? Now, could that what you know, all I do know is that her stuff get through. Now, I didn't want to take a chance on this property in particular because of where it is to to even to go with somebody that didn't have the relationship. If she was black and had a relationship, I'd hire her. But the fact of the matter is that black attorneys that I know of don't have as close a relationship that that she does. Like I guess any anywhere else in the city, it wouldn't matter. But this property in particular, I didn't even want to chance it. Right. So I went there, you know, and then a lot of it is with that relationships, like what can you get? And I feel like using the white attorney in this case is going to get me further. I still might not get the zoning that I need for the property or get the variance, but I know that this is the best chance for me at the moment at this property. But see here's my oh, that goes to my Courtney. point. Hold on, Courtney. Malik, real quick, tell everybody what an RCO is. A registered community organization. And okay. so registered, and basically, so there are people in the community, that, that now they actually have a lot of power in the city where you a lot of things won't happen, have to get a variance without the RCO support. Sometimes the zoning board will, will go against them, but um, most of Man, the they, time, they most stick of the up time, they have, have support from RCO. They stick up artists, variance. what they are, Kamar, they stick up artists. Well, I want I wanted I wanted the, the community here to understand what it was. All right, Courtney, I know you so, guys know this. But that's my point. But that was back to the point that I brought up earlier is that a lot of us are not getting because we're not being used, we're not getting the experience and being able to cultivate the relationships that are actually able to propel our business. So real estate law is a very niche law. So if you and I, I, I thought it was interesting that Jimmy said this, but there's not a lot of black attorneys. There's just not especially in the type of business, um, a type of niches where business thrives. For example, there's not a lot of black estate attorneys, partially because there's not a lot of black estate work. I'm being very honest. There's a lot of state administration work, but not planning. And what I mean by planning, planning happens before someone passes away. That usually happens with somebody who has a significant amount of assets. So that's the first thing. But estate administration is usually cleaning up a mess. I'm being honest. So we usually have a lot of work on the state administration side, but sometimes there's not a lot of assets to actually, you know, an attorney gets a portion of, um, can take a, com not a commission, but a portion of the fee of the value of the estate. But a lot of times there's not a lot of value in the estate, but you got a lot of work to do. So, you know, there, there's, is a push and pull. But then on the other side, you have real estate. Real estate's a very, I mean, everybody on the call can probably say like, real estate's super niche. But as you get into real estate, there's more niches and it gets very, very vanilla in some spaces. But if we're not, if people, if our people aren't using us, we're not going to get used. And then we're not getting the experience. But I think some of these points, and I understand right, that we're, they're, they're, right, hold on. To, I think some of these points, all right, that's a, that's a, a one-off, right? Because I know Malik uses a lot of Black-owned businesses. And like he just said himself, if he knew a Black attorney that specialized in that, he would use them. No but that's right. my point. You you didn't get some, but you're. I think you're missing the point. We're not getting the experience to have the relationships because we're not being used. I totally that's got that. Point. But, 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 I totally also, got that. But, but, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Courtney, I, I get that point, right? But when you got money on the line, right? Where where do, where does the rubber meet the road when you have money on the line, and then you have to take a chance on somebody? That may no, not but, so I'm, I'm gonna say this. Also, what I said is important is the location of the property and RCO that I'm dealing with. If I'm if I'm if it's in Cobb's Creek, no doubt. It's, I don't. Have, I'm gonna have an issue, right? If I'm in Carroll Park, I don't have the issue. But the neighborhood where this property is, no, I gotta go the opposite way. But I'm not, I'm not arguing that point. But what I was saying is that's a really good example of the issue that I was talking oh, about. Sure. Not, I mean, yeah. I do zoning law, so let's be very clear. I know exactly what we're talking about. So my point is not necessarily, but again, I don't see people that look like me. That's yeah. that's just yeah. Right. You you right, right there so, in the building. <laughs> so what I would say, what I would say is like when I when I talked about black attorneys, I know that we're underrepresented in specific parts of the law. But there are certain parts of the law that we're not underrepresented and our people still don't use us. And I understand Malik's position as well, because um, I had to do go through the same thing, which is how I know RCOs are stick up artists. But I had to hire I had to hire a white attorney to go before the zoning board 
I mean, a shout out to him. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not giving him a shout out that way, but he did get everything I needed. Um, but the fact of the matter is he got it because he had, you know, the connection. He also had the complexion for the connection. But um, I also understand Courtney's point that we have to somehow get within those walls. Right. And, and, and that's why the work has to be done on the outside as well as inside the system. And even even conversations like this where all of us building every Sunday are important because like we share a network as well. Like I needed some help earlier this year and, you know, hit up Kamari. He put me in touch with someone. That's the kind of stuff that we need to build on. So we need to build with each other. But to me, all of this goes back to love. If you don't love each other and try to work, work with each other, all the other stuff we're talking about doesn't matter. Because I think that, like, you know, you know, we have to throw a lot of the stuff um, to the side, right? We have religion and all these different kind of things that separate us. But if we operate race first and then everything else afterwards, then we'll be in a lot of, a lot better place. But we have to love each other. Yo, Jimmy, you're on his mouth on fair kind of night. I like that. That ain't fair comment. That. That's just basic common sense, man. I love it. That's that's, that's just basic cool. common sense. Like people see, and the the other thing I wanted to talk about is is radical black businesses, right? So businesses that say I I only want to serve my own people, they don't get no money, right? I, you can't say <laughs> you can you you can't tell people that I only want to serve my people and then expect for the for the, the system to pay you any kind of attention and give you any kind of money, like. If, if 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 the government wanted to do something right, they would they would have said, you know what, brother Umar, let me give you the money for that school that you've been trying to build for those black boys over there. It's it's all these millions and billions of dollars being passed around, right? But but Umar said, look, I want to build a school specifically for black boys, right? And it's all these billions of dollars passed around. Ain't nobody go to him and say, yo, let me give him some money. Why? Because he said, I want to do this specifically for black people. Now, if he said, I want to do this, for the, I'm just saying. I'm using no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at Kamari's face, man. I'm looking at Kamari's but face. But you know what I'm talking about, though. And you know damn well what I'm talking about. Like, I'm using him as an example. But you I got know, you. you I know exactly you know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. If you put out there, I want to serve my people. First of all, the people that are going to give you the sideways look are your people. That's going to be the first sure. thing. That's the first people that's yeah. going to give you the, the that side. Part. That part. When, when, when you go to go get money for that, the, the first pe- the, the first thing people want to say is who else you're going to serve. They're not even going to allow you to in the in the in the meeting because I, I worked in nonprofit and I worked in nonprofits where I said I want to serve I want to serve black people. I don't want to serve underserved communities. I don't want to serve. You know, everybody in this damn community. I want to serve these people right here. And the first thing they told me was, you got to serve them all or you can't get none of this money. Right, because yeah. nonprofits can't discriminate. It's it's by law. I'm just, I'm, I understand that. But you, I know, I know of some nonprofits that turn away people all the damn time. But they won't state it publicly, though. Know. They, they might can't do it. Wait. Right. Right. But the, thing is, but the thing is, like, black folk can't say, I want to work with black people, and it's an issue. But when you look at other communities, like a, a, a black boy can't even make cheesesteaks in a Korean store no more. A black dude can't even make cook breakfast no more in a Korean store. It used to be back in the day, but when you see all the jobs given to families and cousins, you don't say, oh, the Koreans only do business with Koreans. You just say, hey, I'm going to go because they're in a black neighborhood, right? They, but they still other, cool. other, we other don't. People, other other people in practice all the time work amongst themselves, but but I, and also people will have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Like I I was put at odds against my wife one time, you know, where she was going to go buy a car from a particular car dealership, and as I went in a car dealership, I look at the wall. There's no black salespeople, and so I was the wall. boy got sales. The wall. Boycott Sal. It, 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 it was like Sal's Pizza. Bro, listen, <laughs> not, not, it was not, they don't have, I, I looked through all the business cards, I, and of course the names too, you know, whatever, but all the pictures, and not one black person. I was with my wife, I was like, listen, I know you want to get this car, I need it right now, but we can't buy it from here. And she was, and she was really mad at me at that moment because she wanted, she was there by the time paperwork. I'm like, nah, we can't get this. We can't get this car from right here. We can't get it here today. Like if they can't even hire a black salesperson, I'm not giving them any my dollars. And so I had to, I had to have go and ask my wife, who was not taught like the and maybe that she feel she understands black business and the importance, but she might not feel as strongly about it as I do. And the people aren't willing to have those conversations and have, especially done with your spouse, those uncomfortable moments, then it's hard to even get past to get anything done. 
That's a great point, Malik. That's a great point, Malik. Well, let's check in with the comments real quick. Again, um, I see we have a lot. But matter of fact, before we do that, I messed up earlier. So I want to fix that real quick. We did not do our Bob Spotlight. So this it's week's Bob. To do it. Exactly. This week's Bob Spotlight is on my man, Corey. So Corey has found yet another gem. I think everybody's found great gems, though, honestly. But this one is not your typical Black-owned business. So, Corey, tell us uh, all about this business that you, you're telling us about. All right. So the, the Black-owned business that I want to talk about this week is Kiki Mats. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a young lady who makes uh, doormats and floor rugs um, with, with, with great slogans on them. Um, Black-owned business. Yo, why your jaw look fuzzy like that, man? Why, why um, you? You need a mask. You on, you on, like that. Hey, yeah. So, so I, I found out about this. I found out about this black-owned business. I'm in a bunch of black-owned business groups, and you know, I came across it, and I was like, "Dang, I gotta grab some of them." And so I, you know, I made an order last week for with the, you know, uh, for the beer gang, for the beer gang uh, floor mat. Oh, you got the bear guy. Um, I, yeah, I made an order. I made an order for that one. I didn't get it yet because I just came across it. And you know, everything takes forever to deliver. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk about with the black owned businesses. Because of the way, you know, the United States, you know, the US Postal Services is being, you know, underfunded and defunded. A lot of our online black businesses can't even do business right. <laughs> because the ninety percent of them use the US Postal Services instead of the higher services but anyway but um black women don't yeah. cheat <laughs> yeah, yeah so she got a gang of a, a gang of slogans and it's and it's it's a wonderful site so if you're looking for some you know some some black power and you're looking for some you know everybody uses i don't know if everybody uses doorman but i know i use like three or four of them you know i got one right at my front door as soon as you walk in. So, you know, wipe your shoes off and then want to put your shoes on. So don't don't steal my man. Don't, don't I like the not hard. I'm getting the not hard one. The not card is my favorite. One. That not is hard. my favorite. Not, not, not hard, but not like the popo. Yeah, that one that joint is hot. My, my favorite one. Like one. Don't, get, don't, get, don't get slick. My favorite one says, <laughs> Did you call first? That's my favorite That's one. That's another one. That's another yeah, good so, one. I have yeah, the front so, and the back door. We can do both. Yeah, so um, definitely, you know, if you're looking for, you know, some knit things to buy, <laughs> if you're looking for a niche and something to buy that's a little bit outside the realm of, you know, chicken cheese steaks and, and getting your hair done, Kinky Mats is for you. Right. My man, KinkyMats.com, KinkyMats.com. K-I-C-K-Y-M-A-T-S, Kinky Mats. Yeah. You know what? I, I want to talk about something real quick, real quick, as it relates to Kinky Mats, right? I watched King Gamble give a speech one time and he said, you know, every other culture is able to sell their culture, and that's one of the reasons why they're able to become wealthy. Well, this young lady, I believe it's a young lady, yep. definitely selling black culture. Like, mm -hmm. this is so black and beautiful. Um, you know, I got to order a couple of these joints. But, I mean, she's selling the culture. And I think it's great. Check your energy before you come in the house. Yeah. And that is us. Don't yeah. bother. We're broke. Yeah. I love that one. I love that. You like that one? I like that one. Don't, don't solicit me. Thank you. I mean, everybody else sells our culture. Right. Yeah, right. You know, we got we got folks buying. We got Asian folks selling dashikis, which is yeah, crazy. Um, yeah. But, but what's something that, um, that Malik said is interesting, man. It's just that, like, you know, we support each other when it's convenient, but we don't do it when it's not convenient. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I and I think that that's that's key, right? Because um, people love convenience. So it's funny. At one point when I was working um, as a securities agent, I used to have this Vietnamese guy in my office, and he was actually curious because because all of his clients were Vietnamese and they supported him ungodly. And he says, you know. Why don't you? Why don't your people support you like that? And that's one of the things he taught me. He says we support each other when it's not even convenient. So we'll we'll pass five banks to go to a Vietnamese bank because that's what we're taught. We you know so that goes back to staying on code. They don't have to say, "Hey, I'm only supporting this or I'm only supporting that." 
this is ingrained in them from, from a child, and they do it. It's part of their culture. They just do it. I mean, I, I would agree. If you look at there is, and so, you know, I know we have people from all over the country here, but there is a uh, Korean supermarket at the border of Sheltonham, and that's a town, a suburban township here in the Philadelphia area, at the border mm -hmm. of Sheltonham in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Just about everybody that's Korean goes there. And here's the, here's the crazy thing, right? There was another Korean supermarket right up the street that was older, that was starting like the late 60s or 70s. Well, that one got a little outdated, and then they created another one down the street. Did the same thing, <laughs> the same thing, and they still supported it. And they're both. And they, all, they all, and they only they only know marketing, know nothing. Their people just show up because that's what no they're supposed to do. Right. But some, let me say this real quick about black businesses, right? And I think a lot of time with black people, I think the money seems to be too small in a lot of businesses, right? If you look at in our neighborhood, like all the corner stores are owned by Korean, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Korean, but um, by Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, all in the black neighborhood. You know, I, I hope it's like what they call some black, some, like not some different, right? But when you think about it, and, and when you think about like Ray Licious, Ray Licious was able to create a whole brand that only services Dominican Puerto Rican stores and black folk buy it. Ray Licious, they have more shelf space than Doritos. In most of these um, corner stores, yeah, and they, they do all different type of products, you know, and they and all the all the puppy stores carry it, and they only sell it in puppy stores. And black folk are the ones that support their distribution centers. And then they got their product is sold, the sales team is sold, the the drivers are, are are Spanish, people working the store are Spanish, but the customers are black. Ain't Spanish for state neighborhoods too. They are there, but right. we don't even have a black product to put in them stores. And if we had one, could we get it on the shelves in the same way as Ray Lynch? They got Danishes, they got chips, so they that, got that, that's vertical Danish. integration. That's vertical integration from a from a cultural standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, are we conscious consumers though? No. Kamari said on a on a on a previous show that we only spend one and a half to two percent of our money with black people black people spending money with black people that's atrocious if yeah. you want to if you want to if you want to make a dent in it you gotta you gotta you gotta put the money where your mouth is you gotta put the money where you you know where the game is at you know and the first part of that is is what jim said is love and then the second part is we gotta show people how to get more money you know what I mean? Like yeah. like Malik said, after the love, you got to have the actual money to spend to be able to help these people and help these businesses. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you don't have, if you, if you, you know, if a dollar and 25 cent is going to hurt you, I'm not spending my dollar and 25 cent, but if I'm going to spend it on the most convenient thing that's going to get me the most bang for my actual buck. Like I only have a buck, so I got to get the most bang for it. Where if I got a thousand dollars, you know, you know I, I see a lot of these memes where they say, if you can't manage $10, you can't manage $10,000. That is full of shit. <laughs> I agree. If I got $10,000, I can manage it better because I can make more mistakes, and now I can learn better. If I got $10, I'll make a mistake. I just got $10, and I'm fucked. You can't, some, like, that don't even, that's that, dumb. That's true, but that meme, is, that meme is true for some people. Some people, no matter what they got. Yeah. Hey, Corey, but, I'm mad you just made that point. That would be supposed to make that point on the meme on the meme episode. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I like that, that phrase you just used, Kamar. I never heard it used that way. Uh, you said, um, cultural vertical integration. Yeah, I mean, I that's like what that. It is. No, it I is. Mean, I, I've never heard that that but, used that but, way. Cultural but, vertical but, integration, but you know, forget about Ray Lynch's right and no diss to them. But Goya has been doing that for decades. Yep, I mean, if you really think about it, right? And we, I know Goya is in a little bit of trouble right now, but we've been buying Goya since forever. Goya oh, not in no trouble at all. Oh, they ain't God. in no trouble. They ain't in no trouble at all. They they, they still been hurt air one quotes. bit. Air quotes. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, we, we have, I, I, don't, I don't think so. So only difference I think Goya is a Spanish product, and they put it, they put it everywhere. What I'm just talking about is. Raylicious wouldn't even be able to be a product without the support of the, the corner stores because it's not anywhere yeah. else. The we have fan juice. Right. Okay, but we have fan but, here's my, but, but hold on. Fan is dead now. I know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. My point with the Goya though is Goya started off in the in the corner bodegas and the poppy stores, and then yeah. 
we were able to move to the supermarkets. And so right. my family lives in the Bronx. I saw Goya again at the bodegas up there before I saw him anywhere in the supermarkets. So, you know, again, that support helped to Courtney's point, right? That support was able to help them leverage up, do better, hire more of their people, and keep more money in their own community. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, well, yeah, I think I, I, we need to practice group, group economics on the business level. I mean, I think we need to practice group economics generally, but I think even still, like we talk about how if I go to a black owned store, I'm going to pay significantly more for the same product going to, as opposed to going to another store. Part of it is that we're a, the number of products that you that you purchase, the cost per unit goes down the more you buy. But if you're not able to buy that many, your cost per unit is higher. But if I can, you know, get with if I'm in North and I work with a black uh, black owned business in West and we get our businesses together, then we might be able to get a product and bring down the cost per unit, which means we're able to pass that savings on to our customers. And I think that if we did a lot more of that type of work, because we're not all in competition. And I think that's something like mm. Ms. Noma also is that sometimes we always feel like, you know, and it's a scarcity mindset. We're, work, we're working from the scarcity mindset that if I get something, that means that you don't get something. Or if I take one thing, that means it's one less thing for you. And that's not a, that's not the case. Once you mm. realize that there's a, more than enough money out here for all of us to eat, then I think our game, the game changes. But we have to get away from the scarcity mindset, which is a which is an upshot of a pov- of living in poverty. Right. And I think I try, I try to do that in the real estate world, right? I try to change the mindset. So what I'll do is if another realtor is having an open house or a first time home buyer workshop, they black, I'll repost it. And people ask me like that, well, why are you reposting competition? Like it's not competition. If this business is for me, it's for me. I'm not gonna lose business because I pull somebody else's uh, home buyer workshop. Thanks. You know, that's an end, but I really don't see many other realtors doing that. But like I said, I'm trying to really do more of that just to show them like we're really in this business together. I bring a house to market. I want you to bring a buyer. If you bring out the market, then like we're really all partners. And I really want us to see that business like that. Even if we're not, with, even if we're not even with the same office, we're still really all partners, you know. And then y'all, can still share, y'all can share bread, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's the crazy part, right? It, that goes back to loving each other. Like when you talk about not not always thinking that you're in competition, right? Because right. they can definitely get better better um, numbers on a product if they just come in together. I mean, yep. drug dealers drug dealers been doing that all my life. Yep. <laughs> that's what happened a pack. Yeah, go oh, home. Oh, yeah. That's what happened a pack. <laughs> all right, so Mel, let's let's check in with the comments real quick. So Melanie Alton said, "Can you explain cultural vertical integration?" So now they're out, and uh, that's my man right there. Malik Carter brought up um, the well, it, 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 I mean, it's, um, Kamar, that, that was your comment. That that comment, you should explain your comment. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's a nice t shirt, too. If you don't want it, I'll take it. Cultural vertical integration. Yeah, for that sure. Be, listen, that could be the first Blackwell Project product. Are we supposed to already have a, fir- a first shirt? Yeah, no, Kamari didn't set the no. That's Malik. Malik, don't be sharing like that. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> no, we can set up a oh, Teespring for the Black Wealth Project. That's the first T-shirt. Yeah. Cultural vertical yeah. integration. Yeah, I like it. Let's explain, do it tonight. Explain, 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 Kamari. So, um, again, Malik brought up Raylicious, right? Raylicious is potato chips, right, Malik? They potato chips. They, they were not everything. They yeah. Everything. Okay, so Ray, um, Raylicious is a is a Latino brand, and they they exclusively only market to the Latino markets, right? So they have a niche marketing strategy and it works for them. But as a result of that, when they when they sell their product, it's in the poppy stores. And in the poppy stores, you got Latino workers, right? So you have a Latino manufacturer and then you have Latino distribution. And so in regular business, right? If that was just one company, that owns the manufacturing and the distribution, you would call that vertical integration, but it's not one company. However, Ray Licious was able to use the power of their culture to leverage their distribution centers. And so their company was able to manufacture it and distribute it all within their culture. So I just called it cultural vertical integration, CVI. 
We need more of that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we oh, CVI, you can add him in anything. So definitely not competition. Don't compete with me. Eat with me. Right. Yes. There you go. Fax me that. And, and, but here's the thing. Competition. Mm-hmm. But, Big but you know what? I do think we do need good, friendly competition, right? Because it makes us better. Example, our mean, our mean challenge, right? It's fun. It makes us better. It helps us better communicate um, money messages to the community, right? We need that kind of competition. So I'm talking trash to Jimmy, but it's all love with Jimmy. I'm talking That's trash true. to me, but it's all love with Malik, right? Same thing with Corey. So I'm okay with that level of competition. But some of the backdoor stuff, like the grimy stuff, we need to leave that at the back door. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, we all work together, man. Like, you know what I mean? We all looking at this Ford 2022 call that we all on right now. <laughs> so oh, so Courtney and Tracy, I don't know if y'all saw that. Like, um, I did it. So, so uh, you know, Kamari is a team for it. Um, oh, wow. I shouldn't say that because I want to somebody to take that investment advice. Not yeah. investment advice. This, this is not investment advice. Yeah. Not so, so Malik said, Malik said in, solidarity, in solidarity with Kamari, he bought a, a couple calls for 2022, of, you know, Ford, $17 calls. So, you know, what we did is we, we all oh, did it. 11, we all did it. Yeah. Whatever the number is. No one told yeah. us. Nobody told me and Tracy, though. It was we, in the Black Folk Project we, group. We, 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 group. Just, we just we saw it in the group and we just all did it. Oh, yeah. So we all just went in solidarity. Tracy, <laughs> 20, Tracy, 20, Tracy. 20, 20, 20, 2022 calls. Tracy, so, did you know? If it no? doesn't work no, out. Not the group. Not the group. Hey, hey. hey if it doesn't work out. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Pay better they're attention. They're they in the group. But if it doesn't work out, hashtag <laughs> blame the heart. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Hashtag blame the leak. <laughs> no, it's all and, love, and man. Coach Carter. It's, it's all love now. We, we all we all rooting for Ford now, man. Hey, it's, it's all good. Listen, I have to check this out. I if, wasn't invited to the party. If if you all are not in the Blackwell okay. Project group, you're missing out. We have a lot of great conversations. We talk about money every day. We talk yeah. about culturally appropriate black how to get black money every day. So come on over to the Blackwell Project group over on Facebook. But listen, if you come over, there's three questions, three easy questions. You got to answer those questions. So I want to share this with y'all, right? Because y'all think we just be talking trash. So there it is. Oh, there it was. Uh, Oops, I messed up. Here we go. Took way too long. My apologies. So Malik shared this. Ah, uh, man. Malik shared this a while ago. Friday or Thursday. I think it was. <laughs> oh, man. This is taking too far to log on the load. Yeah. Yes. We, got, we got so many comments in there. Yeah. And, and, and every day, um, the three of us being there battling. Corey be battling a little bit, too. But Corey just be on his laid back chill joint because he's on that private exclusive ranch in Texas. Easy, you know, <laughs> I'm just chilling, man. You know, I I ain't do no, I ain't do nothing nobody else can't do. So here's the uh, here's the post right here. So Malik brought three contracts at eleven at eleven cents cost per contract. So he spent what thirty three cents. Thirty-three dollars. Thirty dollars. Right, because each contract has a hundred positions in it. Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so, listen, we invested together too. Yeah, that's right. So then, uh, I think you bought some, and then everybody bought some uh, twenty twenty-two calls. Yeah. yeah man, if, if, if if it pop, you know, I'm gonna send you your five dollars back, Kamari. And if it don't nah. pop. Don't and, I don't I get some don't I get some interest on that? No. All right, I send you six dollars. I give you twenty percent interest. My man, Tom. I send you six dollars. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Courtney, you hating on me, y'all? Talking about something. <laughs> yeah. I send you six dollars instead of five. I got you. All right, but well, before we get out of here, let's just check in with the comments. Right, Don said something I thought that was very interesting, y'all. He said, "What up, Black Avengers?" And so, 
That made Kamari's night, boy. <laughs> it's for dead. It's for dead. I know it. Shout out to so Don, I yo. Think, I, I, think, I think I might have shared that, that thought before, though, right? Basically, I was thinking of us as like the black super friends. I'm older than probably everybody on the panel, so nobody knows about that. Courtney definitely don't know about the Super Friends and the JLA. I'm old enough to remember the Super Friends. I remember Super Friends. All right, cool. So I said we were like the Black Super Friends, and then I think Courtney said, "No, we're more like the Black Financial Avengers." So, shout outs to Don. Hey, Adrian, thanks for joining us. Hey, Adrian. So Adrian says, "Living in Chicago, I understand, and I had to turn off the news." And mm-hmm. social media to protect my mental health. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, I don't man. really watch news that much because it's all kill, kill, kill. If it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, I mean, Daniel said, I don't look forward much of anything. It's too bizarre. Oh, she's talking about fact checking. Mm-hmm. I'll fact check before I forward. Yeah. Twitter done turned right. into like faces of death at this point. It's like every time I go in there, like they have like it's so many videos of like actual killings on there. I'm like, it's like that on the gram too, though. It's like that on the gram. I watched, I watched this young dude in the store, and I guess they were arguing or something. But he was saying they're doing nothing, and all of a sudden, bam! He pulled it out and he laid everybody down. It I was, was watching crazy. one day. I didn't even know what it was. It was a dude, and they two dudes were arguing. One dude pulled his gun out and shot in the air as a warning shot. As soon as he did that, the other boy pulled his gun and like popped. Him. I'm like, why is this online? But it's like yeah. it's like that all up and down. So you do have to like unplug at times. Because it'll, you know, drive you insane. So Virgo Life said the key to successful black business is customer service. So I want to push back on business. that. Right. The key to any business is customer service. Every and business I, is a customer service business because you're serving and, people. And I want to say, say this, though. I do think there's a misnomer floating around that all black businesses have terrible customer service. Right. And I don't think that's fair. I don't no. think that's fair at all. Um, hey, Ms. Edith, how you doing? Hey, Edith, how are you? Of course, it's stunt man. <laughs> stunt, man. <laughs> stunt 101. <laughs> oh, Don said, damn, this man got a private ranch, buddy. Baby P. Diddy out here. Easy, easy. I'm good, man. I don't have nothing. I'm broke, baby. All right, so listen, we are voting for memes, y'all. Yeah. So here's a vote for Jimmy's meme. Even that's though right. it's for Dr. Lamar, that's a cheat code. Bronner, right. Jay Gill for Bronner. All right. Don Johnson says, vote Jimmy. Come on, oh, man. <laughs> Listen, Jimmy man, you know what a crown is, beloved. Did, did Jimmy pay y'all? I think Jimmy paid y'all. <laughs> uh, Jay Gill says, not enough funding as it relates to black owned businesses. Uh, there's definitely right. some truth to that. Uh, we covered Wayne Perry. Yeah. 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 But it was dope. So yeah. it's another shout out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got this. All right, so Adrian said I support a lot of black businesses online, but I really went to actual stores when they were open because some of them are in the best, safest neighborhoods. Listen, I get it. I can't I blame it. you for that. I get it. Safety first. I get it. Right. Well, that's why we, we have food, to make sure that we the focus the best on food the worst blocks. I mean, you ain't never no, lie, but that, I, but I think that's that's why we have to like focus on being able to um be accessible online though. Right mm-hmm. for for the, that that's one of the reasons why, and I think like I think COVID has shown a lot of not just us but all businesses. Yeah. All right. So Wayne Wayne Terry says, "Here's a suggestion: Do a LeBron, hire those folks, but challenge them to hire or mentor our people." I get I get the sentiment. I get the LeBron sentiment. had LeBron had leverage though. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like he, in order I to do business with him, in order to do business with him. You had to train one of his people up, and it actually worked out. With the way the, what he's done is real revolutionary, and I think Thanks. when he's done playing, we'll be able to look back and see just how revolutionary it was. But he leveraged, he created, he, he created that. He used his leverage. He used his leverage better than anyone else. Um, so, yeah. and when we get in positions where we have leverage, that's what we got to do. But I think we have leverage in places that we don't really acknowledge. I think we have leverage across the field. It doesn't matter if we're LeBron or Leroy. I mean. You, I don't. I mean, no offense to any Leroy's out there, but my point is, is that <laughs> shout out to Leroy's. Shout out to Leroy's. Don't cut my DMs, cussing me out. Send my phone on you, and that'll be the end. Shout so, out to Bruce Leroy. 
But but I think again is that we do come to each we come to the marketplace with leverage. It's just we have to acknowledge we have to figure out what where that leverage is and use it. So at the end of the day is that sometimes people will get with you because of who you are. And it's like, oh, that's great. You want to get with me because of whatever? Call it. I got something for you. In order to get me, this person comes with me. It's kind of like I'm my only child, so I don't have this quite experience, but there's a meme floating around that I don't know if you guys have seen this like I saw it. You know, the sisters want to start a group, but then here comes the crazy brother. And he, she's like, mom is like, you guys can start a group, but you have to bring your brother. So the, sing, the sisters were singing, dancing, doing the thing. And then the brother was off in the corner doing something else. But I think that's the bigger thing is that, again, it's like, hey, if you want me, you're going to have to bring this too. And that's just the way it's going to happen. And, and when we kind of push forward that narrative, a lot of times we are able to use our leverage, whatever that is, to actually get something more. But I think it's good about understanding, loving ourselves. Right. Because I think I sometimes we take scraps. Right back to it. We, we take scraps. Everything and we don't know our value. And right. we don't know our value mm-hmm. because we don't love ourselves. Right. Y'all all spitting bars tonight. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, hey, you Jamal, you. Oh, what's good? What's good? What's good? He keeps it all to himself. Wait, who? Which guy? Yeah. Oh, it's not, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about CBI? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Kamari. For yeah, sure. Black, <laughs> Black Wall sure. Fax Food. How do we get our hands on those uh, doormats? Go to uh, Corey, tell them where to go. Kiki Mats, K I C K Y M A T S dot com. Kiki Mats. N I G Kiki Mats. So that's that's easy enough, right? Kiki Mats. Okay, Alton also says that's a fact. Mm. Gotta unplug. We should be fasting from everything at times. I agree with that. Not just food, but especially social media. We never think about how all the constant negativity plays in our mental. Well, I do. I have a um I have a saying. I tell my oldest son, he's 26, and I tell him to protect his mind and guard his spirit. I know he don't get it, but I tell him that for a reason. Because at time, at all times, you should be protecting your spirit and protecting your mind. Um, and you got to unplug to do that a lot of times. So, um, yes, 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 yes. yes. Alright, we're moving right along. Anybody have a black joy moment this week? Uh, I, yeah, go, ahead. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You go first. No, man, just yesterday, man, it was love. I got just me and my uh, my squad from college, my friends from here. We all got together on a Zoom call, man. We talked about building wealth together. We talked about, we, it was like a brain dump. Everybody was just sharing the experience, talking about stocks, talking about therapy, talking about raising kids, man, with just everything. It was a beautiful moment, you know, and, and shout out to technology for making that happen. You know, for all of us to be able to get together and do that that brain dump, man, it was a it was a good experience. Hey, Malik, was it hard to talk about therapy? Was that a hard conversation for brothers? Um, no, because normally I start something like that. I will start, and because I'm just pretty much blunt with it, it's easy to, to come. It's not it's not difficult. No, no, nah, that's dope. That's definitely dope. I'm um I'm really glad that y'all were able to do that. Anybody else have anything else? Yes. Hi. So this week, um, actually the 5th of August was my one year keto anniversary. So I have lost to date 60 pounds. Nice. So, super excited. You know, no high blood pressure, no prediabetes. Um yeah, just yeah. just really changed my life. And I'm just super excited about it. And it makes me feel good. And I forgot to talk about, about social media because, you know, life happens. But, you know, just de- deciding to love myself and put myself first has been the best decision that I made. But the fact that it's been for a year and I made it a lifestyle and not a diet. So it's basically just I eat low carb and that's what's good for my body. And finding actually being patient enough with myself to find out what works for me was a big decision and also kind of, you know, putting out every what everybody else's ideas of what people should be eating and not eating and all this other stuff. I mean, it just really worked well. And it's just like, again, putting myself first for a year is the most amazing thing that I've done for myself 
um, that I've accomplished. So I'm, I'm just that was just gave me so much joy. So that was my joy of the week. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope, Courtney. No. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Hold on, Jimmy. We got to get Corey. Corey's been trying to get it. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, my, I mean, my black joy moment of the, of the week is that my, my son actually starts to recognize colors, man. Like, he's, he's, uh, He's two, two and a half, and I've been trying to teach him colors, and he's been playing with my emotions. And this week he didn't play with my emotions. He actually went through with it. And so that's my black joy moment. Like, my young boy is not playing with my emotions no more. He's actually, you know, sitting still and listening to his dad. And if you know anything about my son, that's an accomplishment. (laughs) Yo, that's dope, Corey. I mean, listen. What what are the things about black joy moments? Right? Again, we see so much black trauma. It's great to talk about and see black joy. And I mean, the most one of the most important things we can do is build our families up. So that's a dope thing, man. Congrats. Yeah, man. congrats. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, Jimmy, you you were trying to jump in. What you got? No, I'm just going to say that today is a National Book Lovers Day. So I saw Ooh. a lot of um. On social media about you know in the spaces I'm in are black folks talking about their favorite books. So like a joy moment for me. Uh, also came across this amazing book called Freedom Farmers, uh, by an author named Monica White, and it's about like you know um revolutions in farming and it talks about the history of Fannie Lou Hamer and what she did in agriculture. So it's a pretty amazing book. Um, my wife will be down with. But today is National Book Lovers Day, so I love seeing black folks talk about books. Ah, oh, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. I didn't Great. see Monica today. Was she in the comments? Mm-hmm. She just I know she's in. watching. I don't think she's oh. said anything. But yeah, okay. so that so that's that that's but it's definitely dope though. Um that book she put me down with is called Freedom Farmers. Um and it's it's, it's pretty fire. Gotcha. Um Tracy, you got anything? Um, not nothing really I can think of off the top of my head for joy, but <laughs> I'm inspired by everybody else's comments so far. Tracy kept me sane this week. Shout out to Tracy. Oh, that I did. Shout out to Tracy. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I know how hard. So I know how hard. That can be. Routine now that I don't even look at that as like a feat. Like it's just like you know I got to check on friends, clients, make sure people aren't jumping off the bridge, aren't going <laughs> to lose their entire mind because stuff is going wrong and they can't control it. Like. I, I, I see that as just par for the course, but thank you for that, Courtney. But I, listen, <laughs> listen, when you have to FaceTime somebody in the middle of rehab, I'm like, look at the floor, Tracy. <laughs> 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 There's no walls. Oh, I, no walls. It was a lot. Yeah, I so I, was like, I thought you were having one of those $2,000 lunches or something. Listen, I mean, to see a face when you're doing things that you're scared of, I, yep. I can't really express that to you enough yep. of having a group of people that just support and encourage you Absolutely. when you're doing things that because you, you have to do things afraid. Like I think everybody feels like, oh, I'm not gonna do it until you know till I feel comfortable enough. And it's like, no, you're never gonna feel comfortable, you're never, never gonna not be afraid. So never. you just gotta get people behind you to just like you can do it, you can do it. That's what you need. <laughs> so like I said, when I saw I had no walls in my house, there was no walls, there were walls, there were no walls, there was no floor, there was no bathtub. There was, there was nothing. I could see the when I went up the steps, I could see to the back of the house with the brick exposed. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. But Tracy was it. Like progress to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's good progress. I mean, anybody who's done a rehab knows that this is a stage that is important and it's actually a good stage to be at. But she <laughs> she just freaked out just seeing that is overwhelming when it's a property that you're you grew up with or you knew to have certain things and then when you see it completely devoid of that you're just like (gasps) exactly (laughs) exactly exactly that's exactly what happened ripped it down to the studs studs. and i've been saying and the thing is i've been saying for months i was like yeah they're gonna have to bring it down to the studs and i kept saying that but it just did not it did it did it actually saying it was a whole different monster facts (laughs) big facts big facts all right so this is my this is my black joy for the moment. Um, everybody knows I'm a big hip hop head. Everybody knows I'm a major Jay-Z fan. So Rock Nation is partnering with, with Brooklyn's Long Island University. And they're building out a program for sports management and entertainment. 
So that whole program is going to focus on underserved children and getting them into the sports management industry. And we already know what a lot of those children are going to be and what they're going to look like. So that's that's my Black Joy moment of the week. Okay. And to, tomorrow you're going to see all the polls. How come it couldn't be HBCU? Yeah. Mm, ha- hashtag yeah. actionable items. What's, what was that, Jimmy? I said, act. That's, I guess that's actionable items. Uh, uh, here we go. I'm joking. I'm joking, man. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke. Yeah. Hey, listen. It's all great for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. So as we wrap up the show, I always ask every week, how can we, how can we all be supportive to our panel today? Every week they come in, they give up their time. Um, we don't ask for anything of you, but we do ask for your support. So, Jimmy, how can we be supportive of you uh, this week? Um, first off, I just want to um say shout out to Melanated All, and I saw his comment down there because I never heard of Empire Cotton, so I'm getting ready to get that. So thanks for sharing the book with us. But um, follow the Black Wealth Project on um, Instagram as well as YouTube, um, you know, and make sure that you uh, follow my memes on at by the hood. <laughs> also, um, everybody, I want everybody to support Courtney. Courtney has an uh, event coming up. So I want to use my time to tell everybody to support what Courtney got going on. Aww. There we go. Yay. That was very nice. Hey. All right, Courtney. You're up. I'm up. Are you gonna put the screen on me? It's not. Yes, it's not on me. It's not on me. I miss. I misclicked. Okay. Um, I'm really just moved by that, Jimmy. Thank you. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, follow by the hood. They have the best memes. But um, follow what? them on all. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to be clear. Um, you know, they have the best beams. I love them. They are awesome. But they also provide awesome content and value, especially on Instagram, um, where it's just, you know, you listen. I just love them. So follow them. Um, Panda Express. Uh, Panda. Pan- 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 you're, you're petty. You're petty. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so I do. So thank you, Jimmy, for the shout. I have the Seven Streams of Income Summit coming up um, Monday, August 17th through Wednesday, August 19th. We'll be talking the Seven Streams of Income, um, Earned Income, Income, Interest Income, Royalty Income, Capital Gains Income. I'm like counting them on my fingers. I feel like I'm missing something. Rental Income. Capital gains, dividends, I forget. I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, prop, business income, profit. Um, so we'll be talking, I have six different speakers talking about the seven streams, about maximizing and creating more streams, but then also maximizing your current streams. So it's a three-night event. Early bird tickets are over tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard. Then it goes up to regular price. Um, I really hope to see you guys there. We have experts on experts on experts. So I'm super excited. So again, thank you, Jimmy, for the shout. I really appreciate it. Hi, Monica. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Yeah, you forgot about the uh, the intellectual property one. That's the one you was missing. Thank you. Royalty income. Yes, thank you. Thank you for it. I was counting and then my fingers. Yeah, it <laughs> you just lost didn't work. I lost, I lost it. it was hey, listen, we all do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we had that. We had an age where that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Kamari. I appreciate that. Seven streams. Yeah. Seven streams. So you got earned income, interest income, royalty income, rental income, profit or business income, dividend income, and capital gains income. Yep. Here you go, Courtney. Thank you. So those are all the things you're going to be talking about, right? Yes. Well, my me and my expert. So I have an expert for every every single stream of income, except I'll be talking about dividend and interest income at the same time. Okay. Malik, did you go yet? I did not go. Yeah. All right, so I guess it's on me. So I'm going to follow suit with Jimmy. I said I did not go. <laughs> and, and I did not go either or Tracy. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. You I'm forgot so about all those people? How can we support you, Tracy? Um, For me, it's typically the same thing. I always tell people, buy property, own something, and please, please, please seek out your Black professional. There is one somewhere. Try to find them. Okay. Hey, that was... Uh, Pretty simple, right there. I believe I don't want to leave you out. What was? Your, how can we support you this week? 
All right, so right now, you know, I'm still on my hundred, my thousand job mission for the city of Philadelphia. Uh, there's a company they are hiring. They have on the spot um, interviews and hiring on it's my page, uh, August the 12th and August 14th. It's called FTG Logistics. It's basically going to be, uh, he's the fulfillment for Amazon. Like I said, he has like 90 positions open and he is hiring on the spot on August the 12th and August the 14th at 27 Chester Pike in Collingdale, PA. Uh, it's on my Instagram page at Real Estate Coach Carter. And um, except if you know someone that, that needs a job, uh, that's on us by hiring very little qualifications to the meet. But like I said, he said it's 90 positions available at 90 spots. And then we're going to try to get them filled up and uh, get to some other folks. Like I said, we're trying to get. And if you know of anybody you hire anything coming up, then please send me a DM and uh, let me know what the jobs are. And I can share them out. Like I said, I'm trying to get, I need to get a thousand people um, gainful employment. Word, word. Word, the big bird. All righty. Uh, who's next? Jimmy? No, Corey. No, no Corey. 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 Yo, yo, yo. My, 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 um, <laughs> uh, hey, you know, dollar sign Corey Camp for the Bitcoin fund. <laughs> I'm not going to let this go. My Bitcoin fund is being severely underfunded by y'all. It's being completely funded by me. Severely underfunded by y'all. No one has hit me. Dollar sign C O R E Y C A M P for the for the Bitcoin. I need hey, my Bitcoin fund is being severely underfunded by the public. That is my <laughs> that is my getaway fund, and y'all not y'all not supporting that the right way. Listen, I supported that fund. No, you supported it. You gave me five dollars, and it turned into five dollars and sixty five cent in in a, in a day. So I like the, I like the way that moved. So, nice return. You know, nice return on that. So I'm looking for more of those kind of returns. So dollar sign C O R E Y C A M P for the Bitcoin fund. If anything you send me on Cash App goes directly into the Bitcoin fund, I need I need that getaway. I need to make that happen. Big, that is my that is my getaway plan, and I need help with that. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm Kamari. So before you go, I do want to say one more thing before you go. Everybody check out our podcast this Wednesday because Courtney's actually our guest this Wednesday on the Body oh. Hood podcast. You know what I mean? So that means yeah. that it's only, one, it's only one person on our panel left. Um, you know. We got, we got, <clears throat> so, oh, my fault. Yeah. So we got, so okay. last week we put pressure on okay. Courtney. We put pressure on Courtney last week. She pulled up. So she pulled week, up. She pulled up. So now I got to ask the audience to put some pressure. Yeah. On Tracy to come on to the Buy the Hell of Podcast show, we got put some pressure. We got put some pressure. On. You're the only one on this panel who hasn't been on the on the show, so I need to make this. I need to make that happen. Okay. So if y'all got any pull with Tracy, put some pressure on her. Tell her to come holler at the bottom of the podcast. I promise you, I'm coming. I just need to get through a nightmare. Of I know, I know. She. she... She got a, a 500 listings right now. I'll be watching your social media page. I don't know how you hold it all together. A lot going on. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm working. I'm blessed. And I'm glad. But adding more things to the plate right now is just taking a little bit you. You know, more to do. But I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm coming. I'm coming on the Got show. you. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. So please support Courtney's Master in the Seven and come. And come. Y'all see the web link there? Like, comment, and share that that uh, web link. Right, let somebody know. Everybody's talking about multiple streams of income. Everybody actually could learn something about multiple streams of income. That would be a good investment of time and investment of money into that as well. So again, I would ask everybody go um, share and support Courtney's uh, event. Thank you, Courtney. Courtney is a friend of the the Corey Camp Bitcoin Fund. A Bitcoin fund. She just sent a, whole, a, 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 a nice little, nice little something, something. A Bitcoin fund. What she said? What she said? Don't. I'm not telling. I'm not saying what she said. Oh, you said you could talk about mine, but not hers. Hey, listen, it hasn't made or lost any money yet. I'll talk about it next week when when it's in there. I'll, I'll tell you the progress that to you know the money that she sent me. Man, just, just That's cop, hilarious. Them, cop them Satoshis, man. 
All right, so real quick, Jimmy, I'm glad you caught this because I didn't see this. This, I believe, out is a black owned company. I think Alton put me on to this before, but this is a brother selling toilet tissue in New Jersey, I believe. I believe this brother's in New Jersey selling toilet tissue, and I believe it's made from bamboo. Because oh, who, the way- what's that? You who who are you talking about the uh, Empire of Cotton or are you talking about Alton himself? No, the Empire of Cotton. Alton okay. put me on to Empire of Cotton, I believe. Um, and I believe they're in Jersey. And no, I believe, Empire Co- Empire of Cotton is a book. It's a book. Oh wait, but you know what? There is a brother out there that is selling bamboo made toilet tissue. Toilet tissue. Because I'm not it's, familiar it's with that. fiddling. I could have sworn Alton put me on to that. Well, I'll yeah, find Empire of Cotton is a book. Oh, it's a book. Yeah, he was saying because I said something about Freedom Farm. He said he's gonna try that after he, he just got finished Empire Cotton. I just looked it up, so there is a book. So I just added that to my list. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Well, that's my bad. I gotta go back and find that now, so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. So I'm not crazy. All right. Well, listen, everybody. I appreciate everyone that is here. Um, definitely honored by everyone that's here. Thank the panel. Um, thank me. Right. Thank y'all. Um, we definitely appreciate y'all. And listen. Times are crazy right now. People are literally dying left and right. Grab y'all loved ones. You might not be able to hug them because of COVID, but just tell them you love them. Right? Let them know how much you appreciate them. Tomorrow is not promised, y'all. Trust me. Tomorrow is not promised. So let y'all loved ones know. Give them their flowers while they are here today. All right? So next week, we will be back 7 p.m. next Sunday. Blackwell Project. Tell a friend. Tell a family member, and we will see you all next Sunday at 7 p.m. Later, everybody. Bye. Good night.